Hello, Grüzi and good morden. Did you sleep well? No. Yeah. We did. <laughs> and we stayed in a really cool place, by the way. It's called Barabas. It's an old prison here in Luzern. And right now we'll take the well, Interlagen Luzern Express. This is a railway line. It's a narrow gauge railway line that's being operated by the Zentralbahn and is a part of the Golden Pass. Um, we'll do the entire Golden Pass today. I think it was split up in two videos. Anyway. In this video, I'll show you the railway station of Luzern, where I'm at right now. I'm right now in the underground shopping mall. I don't know if I need to wear a face mask here or not. Just easier for the intro to not do it. Anyway, I will show you this railway station, explain you a little bit more about the Golden Pass in general, about the specific routes, especially the specific route we'll take today. Um, show you the train and show you some views from the train. Well, without any further ado, Let's roll the intro up. And before I forget, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you like to see more train related videos, subscribe to my channel. So now we can start with the intro. Just a quick message in advance before I really start this video. If you're interested in other trip reports I did, below the description of this video, you find a link to a map. And on this map, you find all trip reports I did. The lines do indicate the routes, and the train and ferry icons do indicate the station and ferry terminal reviews. Of course, I'm creating more videos, so there will be more lines added to this. For now, let's start with this video. We arrived in Luzern a day earlier and took the Treno Gotardo that came from Locarno. Before that, we took a local train from Milan. It's absolutely worth to take the Treno Gotardo. And there will be another video about that as well. It's one of the scenic trains in Switzerland. But for now, let's take a closer look at the railway station of Luzern. At the front of the railway station, of course, there's a taxi stand. But with the public transport in Switzerland, there's no need to take a taxi. You find lots of buses from here as well. This is a really important public transport junction. You find buses, both local and long distance buses, but also, of course, trains, both local, long distance and international trains. Luzern is located right next to the Vierwaldstättersee. In English, this is just translated Lake Luzern, but I've had translated this literally, it's called Lake of the Four Fortress Settlements. Over here you find one of the oldest bridges in the world and the city center ain't far away from the railway station. There are lots of nice restaurants and places where you can have a drink over there. And at the front of the railway station you find a lot of ferries that will go across this lake. One thing you can do is for example go to Mount Rigi, what is absolutely worth doing. We didn't do this because we didn't have time for this, but I think I'll be back around here. A nice and fun and also affordable way to get around were these bikes. We rented them via the app Next Bike. You can use this app in more cities. I really like this app in general. Time to discover the railway station a bit. This railway station has a big part that's underground and is mainly located right under the bus stop. You find some toilets and in the toilets there's even a shower room. An information point for local public transport, what is branded with the name VBL. A lot of shops and places where you can buy food. It's actually more like a shopping mall than a railway station over here. There's also a big supermarket, what might be ideal for if you want to buy some snacks and drinks for your journey. But you also find, for example, some fashion related shops. So if you want to go fancy to the dining car of a train, you can also buy some nice clothes over here. Luzern is a terminal station and with most terminal stations you find at the front of the railway station a lot of shops. In this case you will not find a lot of shops at the front, but mainly at the underground section. At the underground part you also find some vending machines for the Swiss railway company SBB. But hey, this is Switzerland, so of course there's also a booking office. And the booking office is located at the second floor. The ground floor will give access to the tracks, but we'll go here in a bit, because we also need to take a train from here. Swiss booking offices for train tickets are in general not just a place where you can buy train tickets, but also lots of railway related souvenirs, money exchange, Western Union money transfer. So it's just way more than just a simple booking office or a place where you can go to to ask for information. I really like these and I really like the railway related souvenirs as well. But hey, I guess this is just me being a train geek. In the central hall, there's also a big screen that will host information about departing trains, but you find this in general all over the railway station. A really nice place for if you want to have some food is this restaurant, Tibits. It's a vegetarian restaurant. The food is really good. It's 
for Swiss prices relatively affordable and you have a great view on the railway tracks from here. This is a chain you won't only find in Switzerland but also in other countries, but in Switzerland they do have quite a lot of restaurants at railway stations. For now, let's go to the lower level where you find access to the platforms. There are some shops here, mainly some shops that do have the name kiosk and these are basically convenience stores. And there's also a basic information point where you can go to to ask for information. For the rest, you won't find that much facilities over here. At the beginning of all platforms, you'll find a digital screen that will host departures information for the trains. The route we'll be taking today will be on a narrow gauge railway line. And the narrow gauge railway lines are, of course, not the same platforms as where you find the standard gauge trains. The narrow gauge railway lines are the platforms that do have the higher platform numbers. Before you enter the platform, there will also be an information screen that will host departure information about the specific train. And this is our train for today. At the front, above the driver, there's an LED screen that will host the train number and the final destination. An extra yellow line above the windows does exactly indicate where the first class is. But of course, you also find the numbers 1 and 2 at the side of the train. And you'll find digital departure screens at the side of the train that will host route information. Our train today exists of two train sets. You cannot walk from one train set into the other one, but there was only one train set that did have a dining car. And if you saw some of my previous videos, you know that I absolutely love dining cars. And time-wise, this was also perfectly in our schedule. This train is a part of the Golden Pass route. Well, before I will show you the train, I will tell you a little bit more about the Golden Pass route. The total length is in total 210 kilometers, and this will be split up in three sections, also three railway companies. The first part, at least if you do the route we do from Lucerne to Montreux, is from Lucerne to Interlaken, and this is where this video is about. The second section is from Interlaken to Zweisimmen. This is on a standard gauge railway line, and the last part is from Zweisimmen to Montreux, what is just like the first part from Lucerne to Interlaken on a narrow gauge railway line. There will be new trains for this route that will be able to run the entire route without changing trains, but they were not there yet at the moment I recorded this video. I will tell you a little bit more about this technique and why you have to change and how this works with different track gauges at the end of the video, because this is more technical. For now, let's take a closer look at the trains you will find between Interlaken and Lucerne. And I'll start off with the dining car. Within the dining car you find screens as well as route information and you have these semi panorama coaches. They even sell souvenirs. And I had some good breakfast over here, as you can see over here. Somehow I only take pictures of my food recently and forget to film it if I make trip reports, what is a bit silly. For now let's take a closer look at the second class. The second class of these trains comes in a 2x2 configuration and typically for Switzerland most seats do face each other. At the side there's a small table with some route information and cup holders for coffee cups and you find a small garbage can, although you also find garbage cans near the entrance doors. Because most seats do face each other, you find some extra space for luggage between the back ends of some seats, but also the overhead luggage racks do provide quite a lot of space for luggage, and at the end of most compartments you will find special luggage racks. What I really like about these trains, even though you have overhead luggage racks, and these are kind of panorama trains, they will not block the views. I really like this. There are some spots where you can park bikes, and in the winter time you can turn this into a spot where you can park skis. This is something you see a lot in the Alps, by the way. At the end of most compartments you will find screens that will host route information. Some carriages are a bit lower to the ground and therefore also easy accessible for people traveling in a wheelchair for example. There's also a wheelchair accessible toilet over here. Even though most seats do come in the composition like I showed you with a small table at the side, there are some seats that do have a bigger table in between and a small number of seats that do come in an airline style composition. Seat numbers can be found near the seats as well, but you can only make a reservation if you're with groups. Actually, it's obligated to make a reservation if you're with a group. This is how the first class looks like, and the first class comes in a 2x1 configuration. 
just like the second class you find some space for luggage in the overhead luggage racks but also at the end of these compartments and between the back of the seats first class just gives you more space but no extra surface there's a power plug within the tables in the first class as well and the tables are slightly bigger you can also fold them out as you can see over here and just like in the second class there's a line map for that central baan that runs the trains on this section of the golden pass line within quite a lot of spots within these trains you also find brochures because the golden pass line is quite touristy there's a lot of touristic information given over here. This is not only in French, German and English, but also in Mandarin for example. Something I totally forgot to do for this train review was filming the toilets. Well, you find toilets at the lower part of the train that are also wheelchair accessible and some regular toilets at the higher part. And well, I guess they're pretty fine, but I really don't know. For now, I'll show you some views from the train between Luzern and Interlaken. And I will make another video for the other two sections of the Golden Pass line. Later on in the video, I will tell you a little bit more about the new trains the technical challenges and the different track gauges. That's it for this video. I'm right now at Interlaken East Railway Station. This is the gateway to, for example, the Jungfrau Jok, the famous Jungfrau railway line. I'm not taking that train from here. We'll continue with the Golden Pass, um, but we'll first make a little break over here. Um, and the, I will make another video for the Golden Pass line for the section from here to Zwei Simmen and for Zwei Simmen Metro. I will do that in one video. And in that video I also show you this railway station Interlaken Ost. From here on you also find ICE trains to Germany. These are the high speed trains that will go into Germany. I think they go to this one train per day that goes to Berlin. And I also think there are Eurocity trains. Um, I'm not sure what pop up on the screen right now. Anyway, once again, I hope you like this video. If you do so, give me a thumbs up. And if you made it all the way to this point in the video, you might consider to subscribe to my channel. So hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell button so you won't miss anything. You can also support this channel financially. You can go to patreon.com slash trainviking to find out more. You can already do it from one euro, dollar, pounds, Swiss franc per month. 
and you have some extra benefits as well. Anyway, once again, I hope you like this video. If you do so, give me a thumbs up and see you on my next video. But before we really end this video, as I mentioned earlier on, I will tell you a little bit more about the different track gauges on this route. The Luzern to Interlaken section is on a narrow gauge railway line, Interlaken to Zweisimmen on standard gates, and Zweisimmen to Montreux on a narrow gauge railway line again. Narrow gauge railway lines are mainly very popular in mountain areas, because they can take stronger curves, and building a narrow gauge railway line just needs less space. This is ideal for rough terrain. Normal standard gates or broad gates tracks do have more advantages, so this is why you find this more often. At the moment railway lines were constructed, different countries but even different railway companies built railway lines on different track gauges. Even though international and national standardization of the railway tracks have been made, some countries still have different track gauges. A good example is the former Soviet Republic, but also the Iberian Peninsula, so Spain and Portugal. Spain built broader gates tracks to stop the French army from interfering into Spain by train. And this is no joke. Within the north of Spain, you also find a very big narrow gates railway line network, by the way. However, their main line network consists mainly of the Iberian gauge tracks, but the high speed lines in Spain are standard gauge tracks. So this means you find different track gauges on the main lines, and this comes with some challenges. The Spanish train manufacturer Talgo, what is basically one of my favorite train manufacturers because they are very innovative, build the trains that can change the track gates. So they can change between broad gates like you find in Spain, but also within the former Soviet Republic, to standard gates. This is really innovative. However, you need special points where the track gates can be changed, and you also need special trains. Basically, Togo is the only company that can deliver these trains at this moment. Therefore, at these spots, you need these special facilities. You find them a lot within Spain, but also at the border between Belarus and Poland, for example, and China and Kazakhstan. I do have a video on this specific train as well, and I also went through this specific track gauging facility that was on the route from Berlin to Moscow. However, this might mainly be a challenge that is being more or less solved for long distance trains. Most narrow gauge railway lines are not really through long distance trains. These are more local trains, and for most countries, narrow gauge railway lines are not the most important intercity railway routes, even though there are a lot of narrow gauge railway lines within Switzerland. This is why at this moment you need to change trains twice. Between Luzern you need to change trains in Interlaken, from there on Zweisimmen, and from Zweisimmen you have another train to Montreux. But there is a new technique being developed for narrow gauge railway lines and standard gauge railway lines. Although there is a huge delay on delivering these trains, this is what you see, a change in gates between narrow gates and standard gates tracks. So there will be new trains soon on this route that can do the entire route. It will not be all trains traveling on these routes, but there will be a couple of trains per day that run the entire route. And this is how the new trains look like. The first class looks really stunning, I have to say but I just prefer traveling second class because then I can go more often. I don't know exactly when these new trains will be put in operation, but at the moment of recording what is September 2021 and editing what is November, December 2021, these trains are not there yet. Narrow gauge railway lines serve mainly smaller towns and communities, so therefore I won't expect to see this technique on any long distance trains soon. But I really like that they created this, and it creates some new opportunities. Although there are some delays, so there are some technical challenges. And by the way, this time it's not Talgo who's making these trains, but it's the Swiss train manufacturer Stadler that's using a different kind of technique than the Talgo technique. But I won't go into that many small technical details. For now, that's really the end of this video. I hope you liked it. If you do so, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. And if you'd like to see more train related videos, subscribe to my channel. And if you want to be sure you don't miss anything, just hit the bell icon so you get notified if I upload new videos. See you on my next video.